Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a wonderful day to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. They all doing? Okay, good, good, good. Father, let us stand right now. Father, we come to you in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for life and that more abundantly. We thank you, Father, that your word will not alter. Your word is your word will not change. Your word will not fall to the ground. But it will accomplish that what pleases you. And Father, on this first Sunday of February, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will supernaturally move among us. Show your grace and your glory. Father, let your presence fill this place. And Father, we ask you that you will touch every ear to hear, anoint every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the heart and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you now to give you glory, honor, and praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all that agree with that said, amen and amen. Well, welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. It's so good to see you guys with us today, you that are with us on Facebook, YouTube, Live Me, uh, Instagram, and, and all you other networks. We thank God for each and every one of you. And I believe that God has a word for us today that's going to cause us to uh, focus, that's going to cause us to to receive the promise. What's going on? Show tell out about you. This one over here is black. I had to start recording on this side because it was black on it was black on this side. So proceed, keep that out of my In Jesus' name. But you're showing up clearly on this side. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That's the only one supposed to be showing anything. Mm -hmm. Say access to camera. Allow access to camera. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. Folks, I tell you what, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. He's, he is God. There's none like him. Amen. Glory. There's none like him Glory. in all the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now, let's see here. Because you see, we are in a change right now. Let me give me a second right here. Glory to God. so faithful <laughs> he is so faithful amen now everything is doing like it's supposed to amen glory to God glory to God amen 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 well how is everyone doing today is everybody all right is everybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today amen I tell you to be in the house of the Lord right now it's, it's, a, it's an honor, it's a privilege, because we could be anywhere else, amen, but God has blessed us to be in the very present. And I'd like to say happy birthday to Miss Dottie, uh, Miss Dottie, God bless you, amen. 
uh, that in Texas, we wish you a happy birthday. And may God shine his blessing upon you. May his face, I mean, just his, your countenance be radiated with his glory, with his grace. Amen. We love you guys. We appreciate you all. Amen. Now, Father, I ask you that you would just touch every heart right now under the sound of my voice. And I thank you, Lord God, for the anointing to lift burdens and destroy yokes. I thank you, Father, that you're bringing us into a place in you that we will remember our first, our first love. When you first contacted us, when we first contacted you, when we first came in connection with each other. Father, how our hearts felt inside, how we loved you so much, how we just wanted to share you with the whole world. God, our heart was burning with passion for you. God, may our hearts, may our hearts remember this, and may we come back to this, Lord God. May, I, may everything that you brought, that you taught us at our youth up to this point, God. God, may we always remember, never forget where we come from, but that we remember God, I thank you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you know what? We serve a good God, folks. We serve a good God. And I just want to thank God for you today for, for coming. Amen. We're, we're still dealing with the message on. We're still dealing with this message. And I believe this is a message that was given by God. Amen. For us. Amen. Not just for, for us, but for the church. But for the church, amen, God, I believe, is calling the church back into alignment, back into alignment. Because, you see, we have been, we've been so caught up in, in socialism and, 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 and that, we've, uh, that we forgot the true purpose of the call of God upon our life. We are to be examples, amen. We, should, we are to be instruments of his glory and of his strength. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Showing the people that God is the way, the truth, and the light. And no man can come to the Father except by him. See, we are that light that shined in darkness today. Amen. That's why God is calling us back to this place. Back to this place of, 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 of fear. Into the place of... How many of you know that... The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. Huh? Yes. Amen. See, we forgot that. We've walked away from that. We don't have the fear and the reverence of God as we used to. Amen. You know God is your, you know Jesus Christ, he's not just our Lord and Savior, but he's our friend. Yes. But you got to, there's an or, there's a, a order, a orderly way to, 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 to talk to him, to, to come into his presence. Amen. We have to reverence him. We have to honor him. We have to acknowledge him as who he is and the offer that he stands in. We can't come to him any kind of way and expect him to uh, receive us. Amen. Amen. God is holy. God is holy. God is just. God is pure. Amen. And so when we come to when we come into the Word, Amen. I believe God want to. I believe God want to speak to our hearts. And I believe God want to bring us to a place in Him that we once knew, but for some reason or another, we got away from it. We got away from it. Amen. And God wants to reiterate those things in our hearts once again. He wants to bring us back to those places once again. Look with me, if you don't mind, please. And let's look at something right here. And look at uh, our First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I want to show you something here because you see, God is watching and he's looking over his word to, to perform it in our life. Amen. That 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Am I, and that what I said? Yeah. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Amen. Now let's look right here. Let's just start reading verse number 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exalt you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk, get this now, how ye ought to walk, and to please God. Now, that, now that's powerful. God is showing, see, the, the apostle here, he's telling us how we should walk and how we should do what? 
How to please God. Amen. How to please God. Hallelujah. Now, now notice what he said. So ye would abound more and more. See, if you want to, you want to, you want to, uh, 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 excel in your relationship with God. You want to excel in your walk with God. You want to excel in your in your in your in your uh, glory to God in your everyday activities. Amen. Amen. Then show God respect. <laughs> show God respect. Respect Him. Show Him that you respect Him. How are you going? How are you going to show Him that you're going to respect Him? You're going to show Him that you respect Him by honoring Him, by worshiping Him, by exalting His name. Because his name is high above every name. Amen. When you acknowledge him, when you exalt his name, when you say, God, you are God. There's nothing like you in all the earth. You, 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 you write in line with the word, and we are speaking his word back to him. And when we do that, folks, guess what we're doing? We are coming in alignment ourselves. Our hearts begin to fall in line with our words. See, as as we think it in our hearts, so are you. As you think in your heart, so are you. Amen. Amen. So when we come to this place, when we see this, when we see what God, what God is saying to us, but notice what he said right here, verse number two, verse number two, for you know what commandment we have given, we, have, we, we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, even your what? sanctification even your sanctification amen that ye should abstain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in what sanctification and honor sanctification and honor see 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 god god knows exactly see when, 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 what God is talking about, he's he not talking about uh, trying to watch everything you do. God knows that you are human. He knows that you, you're you going to make mistakes. He's not telling you that. He's telling you He's telling you that no matter what you do, where you are, always acknowledge, reverence, and respect. Always come to the point of your conversation being more holy a more pure, a more clean, rather than foul mouth, rather than <laughs> saying all those things that dishonors even yourself. You, you know you can say some things to dishonor even yourself. Yeah. Amen. You can defile your own self with your own words. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen out there. Glory to God. But that's all okay. I understand. I understand. You know why? You know why? Because God is God is speaking to our hearts. God is calling the church back into proper alignment. Proper alignment. As we come in alignment, as we begin to get our hearts right with God, as we begin to acknowledge God, I, I know that you call me to live upright before you and you're not and, and you're not pleased with some errors in my life. So God, but you see, I can't straighten this up myself. I need your help, Lord. Amen. And this is all God wants. He wants to get involved in your life. He wants to get involved in your spiritual in your spiritual uprising. He wants to be a part of it. Amen. You can't do it alone. If you could, you would have. You cannot do it alone. You are going to go through changes. You're going to go through upsets. You're going to go through downfall. You're going to go through trials and tribulations. And God don't expect you to try to go through it alone. Amen. He said, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. God is so close to you right now that you, if you just would open up your heart and acknowledge him, receive him. Oh my God. I believe, I believe that when you acknowledge him, your whole being going to begin to experience an awakening. Oh, glory to God. Your whole being is going to begin to experience an awakening and, the, and whatever the devil has meant for evil concerning your health, all of a sudden, God, the spirit of God, 
the holiness of God, the purity of God, is going to begin to drive all that impurity out. In other words, God is going to begin to purge. God is going to begin to purify. God is going to begin to cleanse. God is going to begin to separate. And this is where this is where this is where we are right now. We are at a place where God wants to begin bring us into full alignment. Full alignment means that what I mean by full alignment that we're gonna that we're gonna judge ourselves. See, today in communion, today is the first Sunday, so today is communion day. So we're gonna do what? We're gonna judge ourselves. Amen. We're gonna judge ourselves. Amen. We're going to acknowledge the areas in our life where we are weak. We're going to begin, we're going to we're going to we're going to release those areas to God so that he can help us. We're not going to be bashful, we're not going to be ashamed. We're just going to be upfront with God. Amen. We're going to be upfront with God. Why? Because God wants to help you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to restore you. God wants to heal you. Amen. Why? Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So now look at what, what verse we stop at. Go, let's look at verse number verse number five. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number five. Amen. Not in the lust of compassy, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified for God had not called us unto what? Uncleanness Oh, glory to God. But unto holiness. Mm -hmm. Holiness. Now, when we talk about holiness, we're not talking about, we're not, we're not talking about uh, uh, something that's, that's uh, trying, to, trying to do everything just right. This is not what God is talking about, folks. This is not what God is talking about. He knows you're going to still, he knows you're in this world and you're, come, you're surrounded by things of this world. And he knows that there's, there's things out there that's going to contaminate you. But God, when God is talking about uh, sanctification, when God is talking about being holy, God is talking about, God is talking about as you, uh, he's talking about, he's talking about you, oh my God, acknowledging, and he, this is what I'm, this is what I feel like he's talking. Because you see, when you are, when you're going through changes, that means there's a door, that's probably a door open in your life somewhere, amen, and that you need, to, you, need to, you need to come to God and you need to acknowledge the areas of your life that you need help in so that God can point you to that door that is open so that you can close that door. Amen. You see, he's going to let you close the door because He's not going to interfere with your will. If, you're, if it's your will for that door to stay open, he's just going to stand back and just wait for you to make up your mind that this should not be in my life and, and I know that I need to repent of it. I need to shut this down. I need to forget about this. And I need to turn my heart away from this. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I choose to shut this door and what is the door? Could it be pornography? Could it be uh, 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 blasphemy? Could it be uh, cursing? Could it be a uh, defiled mouth? Amen. Could it be? Uh, could it be? Uh, oh my God! Judging. You see, we. We, 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 we talk sometimes when we should be listening. God is calling us out of the world so that we would not be caught up with the world, in the world, being a part of the world. Amen? Glory to his name. 
Now I got some I got some I got some things I got some scriptures here that I'm going to be sharing with you today, Amen. Because God is God is telling us to return, return to holiness, Amen. To return to holiness, the church must understand that Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's coming soon, Amen. He's coming back and He's coming soon. Scripture revealed that He might. See, God wants to sanctify you. God wants to separate you. He wants to separate you. He wants to make you the man or the woman that he created you to be. He wants you to see yourself holy. He wants you to see yourself pure. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by Him. Amen. He wants to present you to Himself as a glorious church, a righteous church, a church that is striving to be like Him. Oh, glory to God. And when we are striving to be like Him, we are turning our back on our former life. We'll turn our back on sin. We'll turn our back on on, 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 on backbiting. We'll turn our back on, 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 on unforgiveness. We'll turn our back on wrath. We'll turn our back on evil speaking. We'll turn our back on lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We'll turn our back on adultery. We'll turn our back on fornication. We're turning our back on drugs. Yeah, lasciviousness, hater. All that stuff. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all looking at me. What's the matter? <laughs> no, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. He is calling us. He, he's calling us back into right standing, amen, to cleanse. He want to, he, 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 he want to, he want to wash us with the washing of the word. See, we've been so, we've been so, we've been so caught up in personalities that we have forgotten our turn our back against the true reality. I'm going to say that again. We've been so caught up in personalities this person is more popular than that person, and, and I want to listen to him and not him. And God is not caught up in personalities. God is wanting you to experience the reality of his indwelling presence. God is holy. Oh, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing today. Hallelujah. That he might present himself a glorious church. Amen. See, we are that glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 through 27. Amen. God is giving us a way out of our situation. And I say unto you, my children, and to all you that have ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I've called you. I've washed over of you. I have seen you. And I'm calling you back to your right path. I'm calling you to the path of righteousness. I'm calling you to the path of purity. I'm calling you to the path of holiness. For without holiness, no man shall see God. For I will not allow 
my presence to continue, I will cause disobedient to be judged. My wrath shall come, said the Lord, upon the disobedient, upon those who have not who have turned their back on me. And yes, I will judge, said the Lord, righteously. And I will move swiftly in that time. I will not hold back. I will not spare. I will not withdraw. I will stretch forth my hand. And I will look upon the hearts of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and I will know the truth because I discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Nothing is hid from me, said God. And I will bring it back into your remembrance. The thing that I have pointed out to you that you should depart from. And I will bring it back to you. The thing that I have showed you that you should turn away from. And it will be up to you to judge yourself for I will not judge them that would judge themselves. I will not condemn you with the world if you would judge yourself. And repent, said the Lord, and return to me and I will return to you. And I will be your God. And you shall be my people. Shaka Magola Basar. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you. Shela Bakula Rabasai. Shela Rabakura Basikila Rabakai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is calling us, folks. The Lord is calling us. Hallelujah. Amen. To return to holiness. To, 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 amen. In other words, the straight and narrow way. The straight and narrow way. The church in many instances have previously walked in this way. But as the prolonging of Christ's coming, people have said, well, he been saying he's coming for, for a thousand years. He ain't come yet. So we can live what, what we can do what we want to do. We can live the way we want to live. If he come, he come. If he don't, he don't. We're going to do what we want to do. And folks, remember what he said. He's coming in an hour when you think not. And he's coming like what? A thief in the night. You see, your timing <laughs> and his timing are different. It's so much different that you cannot imagine because God has given you the opportune time, he giving you the, the, the time to, to judge yourself. He's giving you the time to, and he's giving not just you, he's giving all of us that time. He's giving all of us this time. Amen. He's giving the whole, God is giving the church the opportunity to judge themselves. Judgment is coming. Amen. Judgment is coming. And this is why God is calling us. This is why God is, is pointing us back into the path that he called us to walk. Amen. And that is, see, it's a huge problem in the church right now. Y'all y'all, hear what I just said? That's a huge problem in the church right now. And you know what that problem is? There's no fear of God. Amen. There's no fear of God in the church today. People think they can come to the, to the house of God, do what they want to do, act the way they want to act, and live the way they want to live, and they and they think there's no no nothing going nothing. Consequences. 
no consequences of it. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us, let's look here in, 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 in uh, First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter one. Now notice what it says right here in First Peter chapter one. Glory to God. Look at verse number thirteen. He said, Sub "Submit yourselves to every ordinance." of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the kings or, king, or, or supreme, as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Glory to God. For so it is for so it is well for God, for so is the will of God that with all that with well doing ye may put to silence ignorance. Foolish men, ignorant, ignorant, and foolish men, for as as free as not using their liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servant of God, honor all men, love and love the brother, the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your master with all fear, not only to the good and, gent and gentle, but also to the what? To the forward. For this is thanksworthy mm -hmm. if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your for your fault ye shall make ye shall take it personally but if we but 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 if when ye do well and suffer for it ye take a You take it personally. This is acceptable with God. Can I take you to another scripture real quick? Mm -hmm. I want to take you to another scripture. Mm -hmm. See, God is calling his people. Amen. God is calling his people. Leviticus chapter 19, verse number 20. What chapter, Pastor? Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19, verse 20. Are 
Are you there? Yeah. And whatsoever, and, and whosoever lieth carnally will. Uh oh. <laughs> Do y'all see that? Yeah. With the woman, that is a uh, that is a uh, a what? A bondmaid, mm -hmm. a betrothed mm -hmm. to a husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom mm -hmm. given her, she shall be what? Scourged. They shall put her to. Oh, that ain't what I, That is. That is. That is. See, God is looking at God is looking at us, and He's calling us. To examine our hearts. Amen. It's something else that I want you to see also because you see, we are about to experience some things. Let's look at the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Let's go all the way over now. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 10 through 5 through 15. Amen. It, I was in the spirit of the Lord's on the Lord's day, and and heard and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, "I am, I am Alpha and Omega." the first and the last. And what thou said, what thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Simon and unto Pergamos and to Terathia and unto Sidus and to Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. And I turn to see the voice of that spake, uh, the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden, what? Candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, like unto a son, the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, down to his foot, and girt about his paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flames of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were as they burned in a furnace. And the voice as the sound of what? Many waters. In other words, he's describing the holiness. He's describing God. Amen. Now, let's look at something else here because, see, God is calling. Let's look at, let's go back to the book of Isaiah, chapter, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Now notice what it says here in Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 1 through 7. And in the year that King Uzzah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twin he covered the face, with twin he covered the feet, with twin he did fly. And one cried unto the other and said, get this, he said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me. See, he, he, he see his shortcoming. He see his, 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 his hurt, his, his life. Amen. He said, woe is me. For I am what? Undone. Amen. Because I'm, because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now I like verse number six. Because verse number six, we see God moving and going to come with the, by the surfing, going to take the coals off the altar. Now listen to it here. And he's going to put it upon his mouth. Glory to God. Turn it around just a little bit. You uh, no, twist the whole camera. <laughs> there you go, right there. <clears throat> Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Verse number, verse number six. Then flee one of the seraphims unto me, having a live, having a live coal in his hand, <clears throat> which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Verse number seven. And he laid it, and he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. And I, now get this, folks. And thy iniquity is taken away. And thy sin is purged. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You see, God wants to take your iniquity and he wants to purge your sin so that you can look what verse number, uh, verse number eight said. Because he wants, he wants someone to go for him. Verse, verse number eight said, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying unto me, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, See, once you're purged, once you're cleansed, now you prepare. You prepare to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Why? Because his nature, his character, his attributes is abiding within you now. When did it come? Once you was purged. Once you was Oh my God, once your iniquity was taken away and once you were purged, God delivered you, God set you free, God made you worthy of his indwelling presence. Amen. Now you are that holy man. You are that holy woman. You are that person that God has called out of darkness. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You see, God is doing something right now. Often, often we often we fall short because of a lack of respect and uh, reverence toward God. See, you don't you, you don't understand how, how that how that affects you. That's why it never it never bother you. See, somebody said they 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 out there cussing and doing all this stuff. And they said God this and God this and God this. Amen. And my God, boy, I tell you what, my spirit gets so grieved when I hear somebody talking like that. Amen. Amen. They mad, and they, they cussing and using God's name in vain. And you know what I do when I'm around, when they start doing it around me? I say, I say, well, praise God. I'm, you want to cuss? I'm going to bless him. Glory to God. Amen. They look at me, huh? I said, well, you, you want to you wanna cuss my God in front of me? Well, I'm going to praise him in front of you. Amen. 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 I don't. It just it just bothers me when people uh, uh, when people are, are, are acting and using God's name. It bothers me when they when they when they when they when they use it in, involved with cussing and stuff. 
I just can't sit and listen to it. Amen. And you should not be able to, you should not, you should be the same way. You shouldn't listen to it either. Amen. You either, you either, you either say, hey, 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 sir. No, don't do that. Excuse me. You're talking about my God. I don't appreciate that. Okay. Amen. And he probably going to look at you and start cussing you out. Then you say, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, you foul mouth spirit. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Then they're going to step back, huh? <laughs> they're going to step back now. Why? Because you exercise an authority over that demon. Amen. See, you have been given authority and power over all the work of God's hand. But you got to live the life that God has called you to live to exercise that power and authority. Amen. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Ain't that what he said? Yeah. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Glory to God. Amen. So when I, so when we look at when we see what God is saying to us. In this, in this, in this, in this fashion, we should see ourselves walking in alignment to the will of God, because God is not a man that He should lie, nor the Son of Man that He should repent. What God has said, God is able to bring to pass. We just got to be willing to follow Him. Amen. We just got to be willing to to understand what He's saying to us. Now let's look at let's look at the First Peter chapter one. In verse number 15. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1. There we go. Thank you, Lord. 1 Peter chapter 1. There we go. Now let's, let's now, now look right here. Let's start verse number 13. Wherefore gird up your loin, wherefore gird up the loin of your mind. Be sober, be, be sober, and hope to and hope the end. For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Verse number 15, what are we what are we looking at? But as he which had called you is what? holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of person, judging according to every man's work, pass the time of your Sojourning here in fear. Amen. Notice what God is notice, notice what God said right there in verse number 15, though. But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Amen. In all manner of conversation. Shalabako. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When we come to God, folks, God's expecting us to come to Him with honesty, with a pure heart. Amen. And the Bible tells us right here in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and verse number 4, it says, let, let all things be done decency and in order. Decently and in order. Amen. So when we come to God, we must, we must understand what we, are, what we are doing. Amen. We must understand what we're getting into. Because, see, God loves us 
so much that he wants us to enter into his, into his presence. Amen. Let me look at something else real quick while I'm over here in 1 Corinthians. Because we're going to be in 1 Corinthians after a while. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. Notice what he says right here. We're going to be, we're going to be going through this in a few minutes. Amen. Verse number 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be what? Guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man do what? Examine himself. Amen. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eat and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. We must never take but take up the Lord's supper or communion without examining our hearts. Amen. Why? Because God want everything done decently in order. God don't want you to, to miss. He don't want you to 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 to, to mess mess up your mess things up. He wants you to make it in. He wants you to make it in. Glory to God. And and to fear living a, living living your life before God without the fear of God is not a good thing. Each of us must increase in the knowledge of the Word of God because as we increase in the knowledge of the Word of God, the fear of God is developed in our heart. You know when you know what God is saying to us. How many y'all? How many y'all read your Bible? Um, uh, you do read your Bible? Yeah, of course. Often, yeah. often. Yeah, you say, hey, <laughs> y'all. I thought so. <laughs> Amen. You see, and this is why this is why so many people are living a loose life. You see, they're, they're feeding they're feeding themselves with the worldly things, but their spirit is starving. Their spirit is starving. And and when you and, and then you want something from God, you want you want to experience the things of God. But you, but you have not spent time with God, and when and when you come to God, you kind of desperate, and when you and, and and this is and this is not the way God operates. God will operate out 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 of des out, 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 out of you being desperate. God operate by faith, Amen. And faith coming how? Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Amen. So if I'm going to receive from God, then I need to spend some time with the word of God. See, your mind is going to run. It's gonna play tricks on you. It's gonna you you're gonna always think of things you can be doing, amen. And your mind is doing that to keep you out of the word of God. Right. And you're thinking about things, you might be even thinking about people, you might be even thinking about something that you really like, something that you really want, amen. And what's it doing? It these thoughts are taking advantage of your mind, taking control of your mind, amen. <clears throat> but now if I want to control the way I think. I got to control what my eyes is looking at. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. If I'm not studying the word of God, now my mind is going to play with me as long as I let it. Because I don't have nothing to replace those thoughts. <clears throat> I don't have nothing to replace those vivid pictures that I'm seeing. Why? Because I'm not focused on the word. And the enemy is taking my thoughts and he's using them against me to try to belittle me, to try to destroy me. Why? Because I'm not spending time with the word. And the flesh is all that I'm experiencing. But when I start spending time with the word, my flesh comes under subjection. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now I can bring my thoughts under control. Amen. The Bible tells us in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4, it said, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down the stronghold. See, see, the enemy, he knows how to keep you in he know he knows how to keep you away from 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 from, from, from the narrow path. 
Because he knows how to put things in your life, things before you, that's going to cause you to yield to it. God doesn't get pleasure out of seeing his people being manipulated, being pulled around, being jerked around by some demon of lust, demon of pornography, demon of, of, of disbehavior. Amen. Amen. God is calling us to examine our lives, examine our hearts. To walk up right before him. But pastor how can we do that? We're still in this. You can do it. But you can't do it alone. When you find yourself being pulled aside. By, by different things. Different, different people. Amen. You need to ask yourself. Why is this happening to me? Is it because you're not spending time with the word? Is it because you're spending more time uh, reading a comic book <laughs> rather than the word of God? Well. Amen. Think about it because you see, God is God has given us an opportunity to judge ourselves. He's given us an opportunity to examine our hearts, our lives. Our lives can make a difference if we allow it. Amen. Our life can make a difference if we allow it. Notice what it says right here. The, the same is said about the fear of God. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse number 10 through 13. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 31, I mean. Can y'all go there with me for a second? Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 10. And it says, and Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemn, in, in the solemn, solemn, the solemnity of the year of release, in the first in, in the feast of tabernacles, then when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord their God, thy God, in the place which he shall choose who shall read this law before all Israel in this in their hearing. Amen. Amen. So look at verse number, number number 12 said, Gather the people together, men and women, children, and they and, and thy stranger, that it that is with that is with thy thy gate. And they that they may hear and that may learn and fear the Lord, their God, your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. And that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord, your God. As long as ye live in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. Amen. See, how are you going to get the things of God in your life without honoring God or fearing God? Amen. Glory to God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, 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 can I take you, let me look at something else here. Let me look at something else here because you see, God is... Is trying to say something, and I want us to hear what God is saying. He, he's not trying. He is saying something. But I want you to hear what he's saying. I want you to hear what he's saying. Glory to God. Look at verse, uh, chapter 17, verse number 19. Chapter 17, verse number 19, same, same book, Deuteronomy. And it shall, come, and it shall be with, with him that and it shall be with him. Oh, here we go. Glory to God. Well, I thank you for joining us right here on live on uh, on Instagram. And I pray that God bless you. Pray that God keep you. Now we're going to be joining you again later. <laughs> Got it. Got it.
putting it back on again. Amen. Amen. Huh? Uh, chapter 17, verse 19. Chapter 17, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And it reads, And thou shalt come unto the unto the priest, the leap. No, that's verse number 9. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse number 19. Here we go. And it shall and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the th all the days of this of his of his life. And he may learn to fear the Lord. Is God to keep all His words of the of this law and these statutes to do them? See, God, you you read the Word of God, you hear the Word of God, you 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 been preached the Word of God, but you're not applying the Word of God. And when you don't apply the Word of God, that means that you have no reverence for Him. You know, you don't honor Him. Amen. You don't you don't love Him enough to even try. You just sit and listen. Amen. God said in, 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 in James 1 22 said, Be not forgetful hearers of the word, but be ye doers of the word. Amen. God wants us to be doers of the word because when we begin to do the word, the word begins to come alive in us, and then the character, the nature, and the attributes of Christ begin to begin to begin to surface in us. Why? Because we are not just hearing the word, we're starting to apply the word to our life. And as we apply the word to our life, we begin to experience righteousness. Because that is the nature of Christ. When did you receive righteousness in your heart and in your life? When you became a born again child of God. That has nothing to do with holiness. That has to do with you coming in alignment with the relation, coming to a relation with Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, once you come into a relation with Jesus Christ, now you begin to experience his attributes. His attributes represents holiness. Why? Because he didn't go around just doing everything and everything. He walked up right before God. He walked up right before God. And God is calling us. He's calling the church back to this lifestyle of, of walking up right before him. Not just doing everything and everything. Just because you can. Now, you can live any way you want to live. Amen. You can do whatever you want to do. It's up to you. But the thing about it is this, folks. We got to give an account for whatever we do. Come judgment day. Amen. We got to give an account on how we treated our brother, how we treated our brother, our sister, how we how we how we uh, conduct ourselves in the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to give an account. We're going to stand before the judgment seat, the great white throne. Amen. Now I know y'all don't want to hear that, but it's true. Glory to God. Look at Psalms 19. Psalms 19. Psalms 19. Are you there? I am. Verse number nine. <laughs> Spirit, right? <laughs> I'm telling you. See, God is looking. God is looking for people that will reverence Him. God is looking for people that will honor Him. God is looking for people that will uh, uh, fear Him reverently. Not, not, not that He would take a baseball bat. He don't want you to be scared of Him. He wants you to have a reverence fear of Him. Verse number nine. Verse number nine says, "The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever." Chapter 19, verse 9. Chapter 19, verse 9. Psalms 19, verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The judgment of the Lord is true and righteous altogether. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, we have to understand that. Now, since we're in Psalm, let's go on over to Psalm uh, 119. Psalm 119. And I want you to look at, oh my God. Psalm 119 and one, uh, verse 120. Psalm 119, verse 120. And it reads, My flesh troubled. 
excuse me. My flesh trembled for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. I am afraid of thy judgment. The fear of God must be taught that if that it may that it may fill, uh, fill our, our our mind and our heart. Amen. And if we don't teach the fear of the Lord, then people are going to they're going to live and do whatever they want to do and not given and not and not even consider the Lord because they 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 used to have it their own way. They used to do what they want to do with no reverence, no fear of God. They just want to do they just if I just I just want to do the flesh just want to do what the flesh want to do with no fear of God. Y'all see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Amen. So now, so now, when I look at that, when I look at that, I see that God is, is, is trying to get a point across to us. Let's go back to Psalms 34, verse 11. Psalm 34, verse 11. Psalm 34, verse 11 says, Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. See, God wants to bring you into a place where he can teach you the fear of the Lord. The world don't know nothing about the fear of the Lord. Amen. Our government has lost sight of the fear of the Lord. But God is calling the church back into the straight and narrow path that they've been called to walk in. Amen. And he's calling you to remember how you were when you first acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You were so in love with him that you wanted to tell everybody about him that you came in contact with. And you found out that no one wanted to hear it. And they called you a, a, a fanatic. They called you a, 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 a religious freak. Uh huh. Y'all remember that? They said that you. They said, "Get out of my face! I don't want to talk to you no more." That's all you want to talk about, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 because of that, and because of that, you was isolated. You was all, you was all alone because no one wanted to be around you. I know I was. I was isolated. No one wanted to be around me. Not even my family. Amen. And so I was isolated. I was out there in that block house all by myself. No one coming, no one going. Just me. And the angels. <laughs> Amen. Now look what he says right here. Amen. First of, of, of 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. I've told you I'm going to give you some scriptures today. 2 Kings. Do you know where is it at in your Bible? It's in the Old Testament. <laughs> Second Kings 17. And I want you to look at verse number 24. Second Kings 17. There we go. I, I, I finally made it. Second Kings 17, verse 24. Amen. Now, and the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kokum and from Ava and from Am I in the right place, Lord? I guess I am. Amen. And from Men from from Hemet and from and from uh for, for Hebron and play the place and place them in the city of Samaria and and, in, and instead of the children of Israel and they possess Samaria and dwell in the cities thereof and so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared no place that they feared 
not the Lord. They feared not the Lord. In other words, they thought that everything that was happening was because of their own doing. They feared not the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them, which, which slew them, which slew some of them. Wherefore, verse number 26, wherefore they spake to the king of Syria, of, of Syria saying, the nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the know not the matter of the God of the land. Therefore he had sent lions among them and behold they slay them because they know not the manner of the God of the land. You see, you hear, you see what he's saying? Yeah. They know they see God. What was it, what was that happening? The wrath of God was released upon them because they had no fear of God. They had no reverence of God, and therefore, because they did evil in the sight of God, God allowed the lions to come in and devour them. Amen. Now, what do you think? You think God changed his mind today? No. You think God will not allow evil to overtake you if you continue in evil? You continue in having, doing your own way, living your own lifestyle, dreaming your own dream, doing your own thing, amen? Then all of a sudden, you're going to find out that God, Father, I need help. Lord, I... I'm, 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 ex I'm going through this and I'm going through that and, and, and I don't know what to do. God said, Jeremiah chapter, Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6, he said, return to me and I will return to you. Amen. See, God wants us to return to him, but he wants to return him in the right way. In the right way. What is the right way? The right way is, is righteousness and holiness. Remember what he said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin, their sin of what? Of forgetting who I am. And I will heal their land. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all understand what the Lord is saying? God is calling us. See, we must, we must pray to God that he may teach us the fear to fear him, that we may walk in his truth and have communion with him. See, our communion today, we're going to have communion after a while. But is our communion going to be with the Lord or is it going to be with man? You see, this is what it's all about, folks. God wants our communion. When we, go to, when we go to the communion table, when we partake of the, the fruit of the vine and the bread of the, and, and, and the, bread of the vine, uh, the bread of the body, the, the brokenness of his body, which is the, the bread, amen, when we partake of this, we should be Coming to God with a spirit of reverence, not with a not with a the, the idea that well this is the first of the month we do this every first of the month so let's do it and get it over with. What where's the reverence in that? Where is God being acknowledged in that? This is that something we do every first Sunday. No, if we do that first, that's true, but. We should do it with a spirit of reverence. A spirit of fear. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen. So let's look at look, 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 one more scripture. Psalms 86. Psalms 86. I know y'all say I'm going back and forth. I am. I know it. But you need it. You need it. I need it. We all need it. Shila bakata la bakai. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now look here, Psalms 86, verse number 11. Psalms 86, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth until my heart to fear thy name. Glory to God. I will walk in thy truth. Glory to God. Y'all see that? I will walk in thy truth until my heart fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. See, what am I doing? I'm acknowledging him. I'm, 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 I'm giving him glory. I'm giving him honor. I'm praising his name. I'm blessing his name. Amen. I'm, I'm giving reverence to him. Amen. In other words, the fear of the Lord is beginning to be exalted in my heart. And it comes out in a form of acknowledgement. God, I love you so much. God, you're so real. You're more real to me than that tree that's out in that yard because you created that tree. You're more real than these people that are here because you created them also. Amen. When we studied the Word of God and began to meditate upon the Word of God, the Word of God began to began to release its nature. I'm telling you, the reason why I'm telling you this is because recently I have begun to spend more time in the Word than I've done in a long time because of my business and my family life and, and my ch and I, 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 I'm, I'm a very busy man. But lately, I have been putting more time in the Word. And let me tell you something. I can see the difference. Amen. I'm not just talking to you just to hear myself talk. Amen. Because the fear of the Lord is beginning to resurface in my heart like never before. Amen. I'm saying, God, this year, 2022, let this be a year of my total, complete, full surrender to you. Amen. You know why I'm, I'm, I'm making this my year, my, my, my declaration for the year? Because time is short, folks. Time is short. We could be gone like this. And when I go, I want to know that my heart is right with God. And I want to know that your heart has been given the opportunity to become right with God. Amen. I don't want you to go and then say, well, he didn't tell me the truth. You're going to get the truth here. Then it's going to be up to you to, it's going to, be up to, you to receive the truth, but I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the truth. Whether you receive it or not, it's up to you. Amen. Because your blood will not be required on my hand. Amen. In, Pro, in Proverbs chapter four, Proverbs chapter twenty-four, verse number nine said, "Now, now let's, let's, can, can I look at this? Let's look at Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs twenty-four, verse nine. It's right after Psalms. Proverbs twenty-four. See, if I fear God, I will not think contrary to His word and His will, and neither will you." If I fear God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to acknowledge him. I'm going to reverence him. I'm going to be my best to be like him. Look at verse number nine. The thoughts of foolishness is sin. That's why, that's why I, I'm, I'm trying to stop joking so much. I'm, I'm trying to put, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, because see, I like, I like kidding with people. I like because I'm a people person, and sometimes in order to get them to communicate, you you have to. You have to. You have to 
You have, to, you have to come where they are, but then you got to raise them up to where you are. You can't just stay where they are. Amen. So, so, so God wants us to understand. God wants us to understand. So what I said right in verse number nine? Verse number nine says, the thoughts of the foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Amen. So we want to make sure our communication with God is, is, is right on time. Now look at uh, Proverbs 15, 26. Proverbs 15, 26. Back it up just a minute. I'm getting ready to get off this in, in just a minute. Then we're going to get on to our communion. But I, this is it. My, is it I just got to get you this. Proverbs 15, 26. Are you there? Look at verse number 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. But the words of the pure are what? Pleasant words. Pleasant words. Amen. Pleasant words. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we see that God is speaking to our hearts. God is call, calling us to acknowledge. Look at Job. Look at Job. Y'all know what Job is? Look at Job. Huh? Job is right before Psalms. Oh, 31. Amen. Now look what he said, Job 31 1. And he said, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? And see, that's all has to do, that's all has to do with what I said. If I fear God, I will not think contrary to his word or his will. Fall right in line. Amen. Then let's look at something else. Uh, if, if I fear God, I will not say things contrary to his word or, will, or his will. Psalm 1914. Psalm 1914. And, and, and y'all read me, y'all read, read me and quit. Yeah, I know you are. I, see, I look at y'all faces. <laughs> I can see y'all faces. 1914 said, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Y'all remember that one, huh? Amen. You see, God is bringing us back into reverence. God is bringing us back into the, into the proper alignment. In other words, God is bringing us back into the fear of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So it's time for us now to prepare for our communion. Father, I have delivered the message that you have given me for today. And I have gave them the scriptures that you appointed me. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to direct our thoughts throughout this week and help us to kind of reflect on the message that we received today. That we will acknowledge you in all our ways. That we will walk in the pathway of life and not the pathway of death. God, I thank you in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to our communion now. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. Oh, hallelujah. I have received the, go ahead and pass uh, uh, Minister Ephraim, uh, Minister uh, well, Murphy, <laughs> Elder Murphy, go ahead and pass out the communion. Amen. So that they can 
kind of get their little things ready. Tell, tell your mama to get back over here for the health communion. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. You that are with us by the internet, if you want to take communion with us, get you some, get you a juice and, and a cracker, or just get you some, some bread and water if you don't have juice and bread and water. Amen. Once I pray over it, once I uh, sanctify it, it's going to be just what God ordained for you. Amen. I'm going to bless it and I'm going to sanctify it in a minute. We're all going to eat and drink together. So no one eating and drinking ahead of me. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take E, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Folks, when we do this today, let's do it with a spirit of reverence. Let's do it with a spirit of reverence. Amen. Verse number 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do it and often that you drink it in remembrance of me. Folks, we're drinking the life of the Lord. The life of the Lord is in the blood. And so when we partake of this, let's do it from, let's do it, let's just open up our hearts and do it from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. Unto the Lord. Amen. Verse 26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of bread, of the body of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse number 29. For he that eat it and drank it unworthily, eat it and drank it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So we're going to judge ourselves right now. Every one of us will judge our own self. You that are with us by the internet, you that are taking communion with us by the internet, you're going to judge yourself right now. You're going to examine your own heart right now. If there's anything in your life that you know that's not right with God, right now is the time to acknowledge it between you and God and repent of it. Renounce it. Get it out of your life. Amen. This is a time of reverence. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we begin to examine our hearts, that you will bring to our remembrance those things which you would have us to acknowledge and to repent of and turn away from. Speak to our hearts now, Father, concerning these areas of our lives. I thank you for it. Let's get before the Lord, be quiet just for a second, a minute or so, and let him speak to our hearts. And those things which he revealed to you, renounce them, repent from them, turn away from them. Right now, in Jesus' name.
Amen. Glory to God. There's a spirit of righteousness, a holiness that is resting in this place right now because God is in you. Amen. Now I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have made the decision in our hearts to turn away from certain areas of our lives that we have yielded to, God, I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we are yielding our members, mind, will, and emotion, spirit, soul, and body. We are yielding all that we are to you, Lord God. We lay our life down today. None of us, but all of you. And we declare today, Father, in the name of Jesus, we crucify the flesh. We crucify the flesh and we bring it into subjection to the Holy Ghost and to the will of God. And we humble ourselves before your mighty hand that you may exalt us in due time. We cast all of our care upon you for you care for us. And so, Father, we thank you. Everyone say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my life afresh and new. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you gave your life as a ransom for my sin. I confess my sin. Jesus, I receive you. I receive forgiveness. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. My sins, though they were many, are forgiven. I am free from them. Father, Thank you for saving me. Amen. And right now, for you that believe in God for healing, this first token, which is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was broken for your healing. He says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 Surely he was wounded for our transgressions He was bruised for our iniquities The chastisement of our peace was upon him And the Bible said with his stripes We are healed As I Look to this Wafer now And when I bless it It's going to be transformed From its common use to his spiritual purpose. In this, there's healing for whatever you're experiencing in your life. If you will release your faith right now and put a demand on the anointing, God will confirm his word, will signs follow. Amen. God will touch you. God will deliver you. God will heal you right now. Father, as I hold this up before you, Father, I ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let it be transformed now from its common use to its spiritual purpose. Father, you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Father, you took those bruises upon your back. Upon the, and then, Father, they hung you upon the cross. And God, they pierced you in the side. You went through a lot for us, Lord. And God, we want to thank you that you love us so much that you would do that for us. And now, Father, we believe the scripture that the strife that you took upon your back was for our healing. And we receive our healing now. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Thank you. let us break Thank you. 
and let us receive our healing. Let us eat. Father, I thank you that viruses, germs, contamination to the flesh, to the body is withering away right now and is leaving. Father, I release your healing anointing right now over everyone that is taking this communion with us. I release my faith, Father, for their healing. In the name of Jesus. And I declare by the power of the word of God that is in me, as I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we partake of this cup, the cup represents the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. And as we partake of this cup, we know, Father, that your word will not return void. You shed your blood that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we partake of this cup, we do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Father, reveal your strength. Reveal your character. Reveal your nature in us. Let the fear of God begin to rest upon us once again like never before. Lord, we thank you for the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. Now, Father, I bless this cup. I bless the fruit of the vine. I sanctify it now, Father, that as we partake of it, It'll no longer be the fruit of the vine, but it'll be the life of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The true vine. Oh God. Now, Father, as we partake of this, we declare that we stand in your very presence, holy, without blame, before you. Let us partake of it now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for purging our sins. Thank you, Father, for forgiving us. Thank you, Father, for delivering us. Thank you, Father, for setting us free from every form of wickedness. God, we are the redeemed of the Lord, and we say so. We are the sheep of your pastures, and we enter to your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, we thank you, and we bless your name. You are holy and you are just. And we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. For all things do work together for good to them that love you. And to those who are called according to your purpose. Father, we thank you right now, Father, that we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we do say so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's time for the prepare for our offering now. Glory to God. The Bible said, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. The Bible said, With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. God wants to bring you into a place of more than enough. The Bible said in Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Folks, as we purpose in our heart to give, God is going to honor his word. He's going to honor his word. Amen. He's not just going to He's not just going to just look over his word and say, well, they tried it. No, God's going to honor his word because you're being a doer of the word. Amen. 
Amen. Not because you tried it, but because you're doing the word. Amen. The Bible says, but he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. If you were with us by the internet, you want to sow a seed today, you go to my website, labbergenministries.com, or you can use your cash app and write, just type, the, to put the cash symbol in my name. The cash symbol in Larry Bergen's, you will get there also. And you can sow your seed that way. Amen. Because I believe God wants us all to get involved in this area of ministry. Not just the message, but in the seed sowing. Because ever since the world began, there's always been seed time and harvest. Amen. God wants to do right now something special in your finances. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray and I release my faith on behalf of all of them under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that your word would not return void. But your word would accomplish that what pleases you. I give you praise. I give you glory. In the name of Jesus. God, your word is alive and health and healing to all our flesh. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that your word is full of life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Larry Bergen Ministries. Dot com. Amen. So those that want to sow a seed, go to LambertMinistries.com. Those of you that want to uh, sow through uh, the cash app, as uh, uh, my Larry Bergens, put the cash symbol in front of my name, and you find my picture there on La on cash app. Father, we pray for those that are sowing their seeds right now, and Father, we lift them up before you, Father. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, that today, Father, represents a day of breakthrough. Today represents the day of miracles. Today represents the day of returning to righteousness and holiness. Today represents the day of acknowledging our Lord and allowing the fear of God to register on our hearts. God, I bless your people. I bless this offering. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus that you would move in a supernatural way, bringing them to a place, Father, where the seed has gone into the ground, that the harvest is not far behind, Lord God, that they will have more than enough. They will not miss this seed, God, but they will have more than enough that every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Receive the offer. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You're here today. I know all of you just made that statement. You just opened up your heart and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But there may be some right now that are with us on the internet that didn't make that statement. They, they, they said, Pastor, please, I want to get born again. I want to get saved. Will you please lead me through the prayer of salvation that I may be born again, that I may be saved? Or there may be one that is listening right now saying, Pastor, I have backslid and I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want I want to make sure that if I would die today, that my soul would be secure in, 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 in eternity with Jesus Christ. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want to get my heart right with God also. If that's you, maybe you... You, you, you backslid and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord or maybe you're that one that have never opened up and gave your heart to the Lord I want you to say this prayer with me right now say Lord Jesus come on don't procrastinate don't put it off you that are needing right now salvation you that need rededication right now say this prayer with me right now say Lord Jesus I repent of my sin forgive me Lord come into my heart create in me a right spirit 
and renewing me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Because I believe that and accept it in my heart, today I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me into righteousness. Amen. If that's you, you say that prayer right now, the angels of heaven rejoicing because of you. Amen. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all for joining us today. If anyone here right now you want me to pray for you, I'll pray for you. Amen. Anyone here right now that need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. I'm going to. I'm going to anoint you today. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, I break every demonic assignment against her mind, her heart, her will, her emotion, and everything that is coming against her health. I release the anointing to lift burdens and destroy yokes. I release your healing power, Father, in the name of Jesus. I break every demonic assignment against her health. Lord God Almighty, have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There go the healing power. Receive it. Receive it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Okay, turn your head that way. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon him and his children. Father, I rebuke every virus, every germ, everything that will come against them. Father, I release the anointing right now to lift burden and destroy yours. Lord, let your healing power, right? Begin to rest upon him now in the name of Jesus and upon his children. Father, I thank you. And I bless you. Oh, yeah, yeah. There go the power. There it is right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There it is. Fire. 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 Anyone else? My God. That was, that was fire. That was, that was fire, God. Can we pray for you? Come on, right here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Turn your head around this way. There you go. Right there. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing, the fire of the Holy Ghost from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, let your healing anointing rest upon him. Oh, re be ram de ki ra so ko ita ta la ki. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, oh, re si amara bakari. Fire! Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Anyone else? You want me, Keith? Come on, Keith. Run. <laughs> glory, glory. glory to God. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Turn right to the side. Like... Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I release the anointing right now from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I speak to every muscle, I speak to every joint, I speak to every nerve, I speak to every disc, I speak to every vertebrae in the name of Jesus, I speak to every bone of his skeleton. Line up now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be restored. Behold in Jesus. Oh, shit. In the name of Jesus. I break every germ. I counsel every germ. Every fire. That will touch his body. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. There it is, there it is, right now. Oh, there it is, there it is. Receive it, receive it, receive it. There it is, in Jesus' name. Oh, shit. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the four of basic king. And Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet right now, in the name of Jesus. You that are with us by the internet right now, you want me to pray for you. I'm going to do something I've never done before. You that are with me by the internet right now, I want you to just put your hand upon your forehead right now. Put your hand upon your forehead right now, you that are with us by the internet. I'm going to release the power of God, amen, through the point of contact. My, your point of contact is your putting your hand upon your forehead right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing right now. As I have put that anointing all upon my hand and touched my forehead, Father, let the same anointing rest upon those who are viewing us by the internet, who are believing for a divine touch. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I rebuke that virus, that germ, off them right now, and I speak to the lungs. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you. I thank you that it's done. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. <coughs> oh, glory. See that? It's coming out. It's coming out. Glory to God. Whatever that was. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you for this service today. Now, Lord, as we prepare for tonight, Lord God, God, I believe for miracles, signs, and wonders tonight. Father, your word will not fall to the ground, but it will accomplish that what you sent it out to accomplish. God, I thank you for this miracle service tonight. And God, I give you praise and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Join us tonight. Be blessed and get ready for to experience the power of the living God. We love you until tonight. God bless. Bye-bye.